Hello and welcome to the Monster Painter. This time around I've gotten some models finished off the pile of shame and I'm going to show you what I've gotten done. So it's really more like the table of shame than the pile of shame. For whatever reason I can't remove a miniature from my work table unless it's finished and as a result my work table has transformed into a big storage shelf. I want my work table back, and so I'm steadily chipping away at this heaping mess. And today we're going to take a look at the results. First up are a couple of classics from the 90s, Chaos Dwarf Foot Soldiers, sensibly equipped with a poleaxe, a shield, and the finest hats this side of the old world. These two are a blend of mirth and menace, at the same time both ridiculous and threatening, they really suit my tastes. I love them. Destined to be employed in a Frostgrave warband, either as a man-at-arms or a knight, they sat on my table for a good four years, and now they're going to finally get some use. So, I needed a bunch of fetish markers for an upcoming game of Frostgrave. I dug around on my table, and to my surprise, I found a whole bunch of stuff, starting with this grim little objective. Produced by Paizo, the makers of P the Pathfinder role-playing game. And yes, I guess Paizo used to make miniatures way back in 2005. It was part of one of those game mastery kits. It included some dungeon cards, an adventure, and two more models, neither of which are anywhere near being finished. At any rate, it is a dandy objective marker, and it's going to get plenty of use. Next up is this dangerous looking blonde woman. She has a cybernetic arm, a sci-fi sword, and a classic pose. She depicts the lead character, Captain Kara Black, in the infamous board game Sedition Wars. I am told this model was hand sculpted by the noteworthy artist Kev White, which would explain why she looks so damn cool despite being part of such an infamous Kickstarter. Oh well. She is pure captain material and will definitely be leading a crew in future games of Stargrave. Here we have another little bob that will be used as a fetish marker in Frostgrave. It is a mover token out of one of those custom Monopoly games, depicting the logo of Casino Rama, a major gambling facility up here in Canada. I liked how it looked and thought with a little paint it would work well as a treasure marker. Some of you might snort at that registered trademark that seems so prominent on it. I could have gone to the trouble of removing it, but honestly, you just don't see it when it's in play. Sometimes it's not worth the effort to fix something that no one will notice anyway. This fellow is an old 90s metal Warhammer fantasy model. I think he was originally part of the Cult of Sigmar before becoming an Empire Flagellant. He is sporting a lot of his original paint, which I touched up and added to. Of course, I didn't touch that base. I mean, why would I? He is set to become a blood-marked berserker in my current Frostgrave campaign, and he'll see action defending all those fetish markers. It's a great miniature and a welcome new thrall of the Red King. Here we have a couple more fetish markers for Frostgrave. These are from Battleground Crossbows and Catapults, the 2007 children's playset game that is a re-implementation of the old 1983 edition, both of which have led many a child into the world of tabletop gaming. The components are quite compatible at 28mm, and while they're very simple, they are very effective with a little bit of paint. I never pass up on crossbows and catapult stuff when I find it at the thrift store. It's always a good find. Avast ye mateys! We have another playset miniature. This fellow is from the Siege Pirate Battle game uh, from 1996. Like crossbows and catapults, the components work very well for 28mm gaming. And like crossbows and catapults, it led many a child to the tabletop. This miniature is nice and simple, it was surprisingly easy to paint, and looks clear and iconic. I mean, that is a pirate. He will be finding his destiny out there in the Ghost Archipelago. 
and here we have still more kids toy fun from the Bald Eagle Adventure play set by Wild Republic. I used one of the parts of this play set to create a very orky watchtower in a video over a year ago. This fire was the other useful component in the set and I finally got around to painting it up and getting it off the table. Now the scale is a bit dodgy. It is way too big for a campfire. It does however make an effective bonfire especially in the context of an orc or goblin encampment where slightly cartoony elements will fit in just fine. Next up we have this shambling old skeleton. I acquired him years ago in a set at a game convention. He's an FDM print and you might be able to make out those print lines under the paint. At any rate, the old bag of bones has an interesting pose. His stance is a bit more zombie than conventional skeleton and I find his disheveled nature rather pleasing. Because he is a 3D print, he doesn't have a lot of details, which is okay. I rather like simpler models. The Necromancer is quite pleased with this addition to her ever-growing horde of undead, and I think he will definitely be getting some work in the future. As we all know, starships require engines. I mean, you can't travel faster than light with magic. You need dilithium crystals or a hyperdrive modulator, which are nothing like magic, I think. At any rate, this starship generator is by Reaper Bones. It is a delightful bit of sci-fi scatter terrain that has kicked around my painting table for years and now it is finally ready to blast off into parts unknown. The last of today's Frostgrave fetish markers comes from the 2006 Warhammer Fantasy starter set Battle for Skull Pass, which pits dwarves against everyone's favorite faction, the Orcs and Goblins. I think these little bits were meant to mark territory. For a species of creatures that do not respect borders, they sure are keen on making statements of claim. Regardless, these little tokens are perfect as the fetish markers of the blood-marked berserkers and will definitely add texture and fun to that upcoming game of Frostgrave. I'm not sure if today's last model can truly be called old. He is from the Reaper Bones 5 Kickstarter and I'm not even sure if it has hit retail yet. He's been kicking around my paint table for over two years, however, and that's old enough for me. It is a truly magnificent sculpture, and I'm rather proud of the paint job. He's all boss monster and would make an imposing Wraith Knight in Frostgrave. In fact, he's so menacing, he's a natural as the big bad evil guy, and I don't think anyone would question him playing Frostgrave's ultimate villain, the Lich Lord himself. I'm super glad he's finished because I can hear the Reaper Bones 6 Kickstarter rumbling towards me as we speak. And there you have it. I'm not sure I made a noticeable dent on this messy table, but I accept that progress will be slow. I'm very pleased with the results, and I am sure glad I got these models finished. Now, for some real fun. It's time for a monster fight! Today's monster fight features an old treasure chest potentially filled with loot. A component from the vintage Siege Pirate Battles game from 1996. Versus a greedy little halfling warrior after silver and gold. A Reaper Bones 5 model from the Spiders of Emrith Cull add-on. Will Shorty get the treasure? Only the dice can decide. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Something deceptive is going on here. Well, let's see how it plays out. Oh, I don't know about this. Oh dear. Uh, oh, 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 what's going on? What's, oh no! Oh, 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 oh crap! Oh my god! Oh my gosh! 
In a surprising turn of events that I'm sure no one saw coming, the old treasure chest defeated the greedy little halfling. A whole bunch of silly nonsense. Like, I mean, a lot of silly nonsense. A lot. Remember to like, yar, comment, yar. Subscribe. And ring the bell. Ring the bell. Painter.